Customer behaviors are changing. You need to stay ahead of trends in order to capture their attention. eMarketer's retail daily newsletter delivers a dose of data, news, and insights on the rapid transformation of retail and e-commerce. Join the thousands of subscribers from companies like Walmart, Hermes, Alibaba, Nike, the Coca-Cola Company, Amazon, and more benefiting from our daily insights. Visit insiderintelligence.com slash retail dash daily and sign up today. I wonder if the audiobook initiative will cannibalize some listening time from podcasts for Spotify, like if that serves the same need on the consumer end. And so will then consumers will just instead of spending their time washing dishes, listening to podcasts, if they'll switch over to audiobooks. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Great Big Advertising Media and Retail Quiz of the Month, November 2023. A special episode of the Behind the Numbers Daily and eMarketer podcast. It's bloody early. This is going to be rough. This is our monthly show that discusses the biggest trends of the moment and newest research and bundles it up into a quiz with some analysis sprinkled in. I'm your host, Marcus Johnson. How does this episode work? Well, it's a big game show. Every month, three of our analyst teams, one, media and advertising, two, retail, and three, social and tech, face off. We've been keeping a running score, and at the end of the year, we crown a winning team who will win a gift card each, and of course, claim the Grammy of the analyst world, the Victoria Cup, a trophy designed in pottery glass by our very own Victoria, who edits the show. It's not a cup, by the way. It's not really a cup, no. I was like disappointed a... to learn that last time. It is a cup. It's a receptacle. It is a cup. <laughs> it is There's a, a tiny cup on top, oh, I promise. But there it... will be a cup involved. But it's not a cup. Oh, you wanted an actual small I cup wanted a to cup. drink out of. <laughs> no. Stephanie, I take, uh, I take custom orders. I, don't know I wanted to that. earn a cup. The, the quiz has three rounds. Whoever has the most points wins the gold medal, three super duper points for their team's running total. Second place takes the silver, you get two super duper points. And third place gets you a glance of disapproval and a humiliatingly low one, not so super duper point. See what I did? No? Okay, let's move on. Uh, (laughs) Let's meet this month's contestants who are representing the different teams. Holding it down for the digital advertising and media team, senior analyst based in Virginia, it's Evelyn Mitchell Wolf. Hello, hello. I don't know why I went so big on the first one, because now I feel like I've got to keep that up. (laughs) You got this. Uh, Anchoring the retail team, senior analyst based on the south coast of England, it's Karina Perkins. Good morning. Hello there. And finally, making good things happen for the social and tech team, VP of briefings based in New Jersey. It's Stephanie Taglianetti. Cheers, mate. (sighs) Good morning to you, mate. Morning. (laughs) (laughs) You're trying to do an English accent. Yeah, she does does this. That's not an English accent (laughs) at all. Yeah, strap in, Karina. It's only going to get rockier. Uh, listeners, you can join in. <laughs> Keep track of your own points total and match your score against these three folks at the end to see if you beat them. Or you can just listen. That's what most people do. Uh, before we start, though, let's check in on the overall team scores thus far. We started this quiz in April. So after seven months, retail is in third place, sadly, with 13. Ad and media have 14 points, so just ahead in second. And social and tech are currently in first place with 15 super duper points. And That's right. It's all to play for, folks, since only two teams will go through to December's finals. The winner's circle, the big show, the Super Bowl, the World Cup of the great big advertising, media and retail quiz of the month. So it's all to play for. The two best teams go through to the final in December. That was, of course, the overall Super Duper Point scores. We start with the in-game scores. Uh, Everyone's on zero. Victoria, who edits the show, will be keeping score. Let's get on with it. Today's first round. I never used that. In this round, we discuss the biggest stories of the moment with a question tied to each. Folks have five seconds to send me their answers via Slack. One point for a correct five answer. Seconds. Yeah, it's supposed to be five seconds. Yeah. That's really short. Yeah, I know. it's not. It's really not that. It's pretty short. Uh, one point if you're correct for questions. One story. One related question. Let's do it. Question one, Humane's AI pin is what we're talking about. Computing company 
Humane has officially launched its AI pin, a two inch square magnetic wearable badge. The $700 device is controlled with your voice and hand gestures and lets users ask chat GPT questions through it. Take pictures, hear email inbox summaries, play music and get nutritional information by holding up food to the camera. Users will also need a $24 a month humane subscription for another phone number and data provided by T-Mobile. Devices ship early 2024. You can pre-order now. Sound like a bit of a commercial for, <laughs> infomercial for it. It's yeah, not. are we they, sponsored by they Humane They don't sponsor this week? the show, no. But you're welcome, <laughs> Humane, for free advertising. Uh, the question is, which tech company did the married couple who started Humane used to work at? Which tech company did the married couple who started Humane used to work at? So Karina says, Apple... Evelyn says Amazon and Stephanie says Microsoft. All really good guesses, but Karina is correct. It is Apple. They both used to work mm. for Apple. Folks, have you all seen this device? Heard of? No one? No heard of. <laughs> they need, the, yeah, they yeah, need yeah. the free advertising, apparently. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Karina, you said heard of? Yes. I, I'm okay. not sure I could give you a huge amount of uh, in-depth information about it. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering if it made its way to UK somehow. But yeah, so it's a little device. It's like a, someone described it as a Star Trek pin. Uh, it's like literally badge. like a boutonier AI device. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Pretty much. <laughs> um, yeah, and it sits right here and you're supposed to basically, well, they say it's not supposed to replace your smartphone, but it is trying to do similar things to the smartphone. And so I, it's, it can be interesting to see if this takes off. I mean, there are a lot of different folks trying to work on the next form factor for AI to try and replace the smartphone. Obviously, a huge market. If you can do that, it's going to be very lucrative. But it can be very difficult for this to unseat the smartphone. But it does do a lot of pretty cool things that you wouldn't necessarily need to look down for. And I think that they're going to have a chance with this if they can market this as taking the voice angle and market it as not having to look at your screen. For example, say, hey, if you get this thing, you can do your searches for, you know, what is the maximum number of points someone can achieve on a Pac-Man score? It's 3.3 million, just in case you were wondering, which makes my 1,247 look pretty meaningless. But you can ask it questions, all kinds of questions. As you're walking, you don't have to pull your phone out. You could ask it what time your flight is today to remind yourself without pulling your phone out, get coffee shop directions without pulling your phone out, play a song, you get the point. So I think it could have potential if it's marketed the right way, but otherwise people are going to say also, $700. You can really ask not. your phone all of those things. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you have, you, to get have it, to. you have to get it out. Oh, you have to get it out. Right. Yeah. You it's already have it on you. Have you seen what it looks like? It looks like a tin of Altoids that you're no. just like <laughs> yeah. affixing to your Yeah, chest. I was about to ask, it's like the size <laughs> of it really matters, I feel like. And also, I mean, it does just matter, regular yeah. like regular pins without AI have, have been out of style for a very long time. So yeah. It is not, it is nowhere near a regular pin. It's like... <laughs> It's like this big. Yeah, you'd have to go black on black to make it work for sure. Nice. Let's move on to the next I'm not convinced. Uh, question. Sorry, Humane. I did my best. Uh, let's move on to the second question we've got for you here. We're talking about shopping Amazon from your social feed. So Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat users are now able to shop and buy select Amazon products directly from their feeds. So now Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat folks can see real-time pricing in their feeds, uh, prime eligibility on products, uh, estimated delivery times, product details from within the ad in their respective apps. According to a September Jungle Scout survey, most folks, 51%, start their online shopping on Amazon. So it seems like a pretty good partnership. Uh, so 51% start on Amazon. Then it's search engines at 39%. But where is the third most likely place Americans will start their shopping search? Where is the third most likely place Americans will start Can you repeat the, the top two again? Yeah, Amazon and uh -huh. then search engines. So which platform or place will people go? Karina says brand websites. Evelyn says social media. And Stephanie says Instagram. We're forgetting a very big one here, folks. What is it, Bing? Walmart.com. <laughs> <laughs> That's, not big. That's Walmart. a brand <laughs> website, though. No, it's a retail brand. That's, That's what I meant. Like um, online stores. Don't try and finagle yourself a point. I don't know. I think I think No, I think know. that's yeah. yeah, I said directly at a retailer website, brand website, yeah, online store. I think, but it's I think just that does but, it, count. but it's just what do you mean you think it should it's, count? You're going against Karina. <laughs> <laughs> what? What Thanks, <is> Steph. <laughs> 
Unbelievable. I think it was the closest answer. How about a half point? Yeah. Half point. We, we don't really do those here. Let me check in you with know, Victoria. You know, you can always Victoria, do that. Victoria, who edits the show, it's up to you. Motion for a half As point. As head of scores. Oh, I don't handle the scoring. I just put the numbers in oh, the boxes. Okay, put never mind. Put in 0.5 for Karina. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Because it's too vague. Uh, I tried, so, Taskmaster. Yeah. I tried. I really tried. Yeah. I don't know why you tried, because you're in competition. But uh, very, it's very... Uh, it's not all about the winning. It's possible like you. Yeah, apparently. I'm a good uh, I'm a good colleague and I support yeah. Karina. Yeah. Sorry to everyone else on the social and tech team. Who's Stop trying to pit us against re- each other. Re- representing. That's literally the point of the game. But anyway... <laughs> Uh, but uh, no, it's not. But uh, it's not. No, that is a point of the game. But uh, but, but but brand websites. It's not the right answer. It's Walmart.com. Oh. YouTube was fourth, twenty three percent. Then it goes Facebook, Instagram, Target, TikTok, and then Pinterest. After that, this tie up's interesting. Queen, you cover some retail for us. What do you make of this uh, relationship between Amazon and being able to shop Amazon on uh, your social feeds? At least if you're Facebook, Instagram, or Snapchat. Yeah, I think it makes sense, right? I think that the shopping journey isn't kind of linear or straightforward anymore. And people want to be able to buy wherever they are and engage with brands at various points along the shopper journey. So it makes sense for that type. Yeah. Yeah. I was reading a piece by Rachel Wolf, who's our retail analyst who writes for The Briefing. And she was saying this is a great way to unlock uh, impulse purchases, pointing out that while most consumers go to Amazon when they have a specific product in mind or need an item Mm. quickly, Mm. a larger social media presence could help Amazon unlock more revenues from impulse purchases, which happen to be the primary drivers for TikTok shops growth, she was noting. Yeah, social commerce is all about discovery and that's the real advantage it has over some Mm -hmm. other channels. So, yeah. Yep. Um, All right, folks, let's move on to the third question here. The actor strike is over. After four months, the actor strike is over. After they reached a deal with the studios and production companies, the actors were able to secure increases in minimum compensation, pension and health plans, protection from threats posed by AI, bonuses if their streaming shows or movies do well, and more money for background workers. The question is, in which month did the writer's strike start? In which month did the writer's strike start? Not the actor's one we were just talking about, the writer's one. Karina says June... Evelyn says April and Stephanie says July. Oh. <laughs> and somehow they're all wrong. Dang, it was <laughs> May, nice. wasn't it? Because it was it. May 2nd. I almost said no May. <laughs> oh. And then I, ah, oh, darn. How did you all miss? Like go game of battleship. Just so close. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was May. It was May 2nd. What oh, we well, think? April is very close to May 2nd. For <laughs> April was. Yeah. It's, it still doesn't count, okay? It wasn't always really close <laughs> half points. Point. You guys are, half point. You guys. A third half. of a point, please. No. Uh, Something. What? <laughs> writer strike, yeah. So actor strikes over, writer strikes over. But it doesn't mean that the industry is just going to snap back. There's a lot that's got to get through because there's going to be less shows made uh, and movies made as a result. This was going to happen anyway. So now there's going to be less less work to go around. They have to pay these folks more money. So the pot of money, it may have got bigger, but with less movies and TV shows being made, it might be harder for folks. Rather, it's kind of vicious irony of getting this deal done. They also have to get things back up and running. We're about to run into Christmas and Hanukkah and a bunch of other holidays. So they have to wait till next year. So it's still a bit of a mess, even though we are back to having shows and movies again at some point. But yeah, the movie industry wasn't exactly in great shape before the strikes. Analysts expecting the number of shows and movies made to be cut by a third from 2022 to 2025. Hulu and Netflix are the only profitable streaming platforms. So it's not like the space was making a ton of money beforehand. And according to Box Office Mojo, 2022 movie theatre ticket sales in North America, still not close, not very close at all to pre-pandemic 2019. So not in great shape. Let's move to Google earnings for the final question. And uh, we're talking about recently reported Q3 earnings. First to set the table, it made $60 billion, six zero from ads, up nearly 10% year on year. Its search business grew 11%, accounting for three quarters of its ad business. We estimate that Google has a leading 27% share of the US digital ad dollars, 27% of the pie. Meta, 21. And Amazon has 13 but has been gaining on folks. The question is, in what year did Amazon start making more money from ads than Instagram? So we have Meta, 21%, but we break Instagram and Facebook up and we have individual shares for those folks. So in what year did Amazon start making more money from ads than Instagram? 
Karina says 2021, Evelyn 2023, Stephanie 2021. <sighs> Are we all We're wrong all again? Wrong. <laughs> it's 2022. Like it? It's going to be a low scoring affair. 2020 uh, is when oh, it Oh, I nearly said 2020. Wow. Damn it. I was wrong. Yeah, a lot of nearlies in this game. Yeah, uh, Amazon, they shot past Instagram in terms of share of the US ad pie back in 2020. This wow. year, Amazon overtook standalone Facebook. Still not bigger than the combined force of Facebook plus Instagram equals meta, but they are on their way, it seems. So that question was really not about Google earnings at all. Nope. <laughs> Curveball. See what I did? That's how I led into it, but I took you on a journey. <laughs> yep. All right. That's what we've got time for for that round. Let's move to the second round. Spoiled for multiple choice. So you might have noticed that I didn't check in on the scores after the first round. there's no screen. No, I, I had one point. Yeah, Karina has one point. The rest of us have Oh, zero. Karina does. Okay. Pretty easy. So <laughs> that's where we find ourselves. Uh, <laughs> this is a multiple choice round where we dig, an <laughs> easier round, thank goodness, where we dig a little deeper into one of the topics from round one. Today, we're focusing on the digital giants it's because they all just reported earnings. And so we're going to talk a bit about those folks, not necessarily earnings, but we're going to talk about those companies. One point for a right answer, three questions. Let's do it. We start with Amazon. So the question is, what new perk is Amazon about to start offering its Prime members? What new perk is Amazon about to start offering its Prime members? Is it, one, a free annual car servicing, two, low-cost primary healthcare, or three, two free tickets to Disney theme parks when you sign up to Prime? Do you mean A, B, C? <laughs> I can do, yeah. A, one, <laughs> you get it. Yeah, that, yep. A, B, or C. Oh, no, I want to take that back. I oh, change mine. oh, you can change yours. I nearly said it out loud. Yep. Still wrong. No, I'm kidding. Karina says B. Evelyn says two. <laughs> I put mine before and you. Stephanie, <laughs> and Stephanie says primary healthcare. So uh, <laughs> one way or another, they're all correct. <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> Even though you had all different answers. Um, but yes, low-cost primary healthcare is what it is offering. Amazon's going to charge Prime customers $100 a year for annual access to One Medical. It's newly acquired primary care service. Offers virtual and in-person visits and testing for additional payments. I'll ask the US-based folks, what do you think of this? Is this something that moves the needle for Prime? Uh, I don't know. I mean, Prime already has such high penetration in the US. I don't know True. that healthcare is going to be the thing that sways that small percentage of folks that haven't already bought in. Mm -hmm. But it is. I mean, it's a nice perk for those that already have it. I would say. Yep, agree. Because also the pre it costs a hundred dollars a year, but the prerequisite is already having a prime right. membership that costs far more than that. So I think it's more about tapping into prime subscribers already. Also, not surprising considering everything Amazon's been doing within healthcare for the past uh, few years. Yep, yeah. Prime households, as you were saying, Evelyn, just looking it up now, seventy one percent and growing somehow. Um, so everyone has access to Prime or can steal someone's Prime, it seems. The price is interesting, though, because if you're a one medical person, if you just have one medical, this primary care service standalone, it's $100 a year. And Prime mm -hmm. is 140 for the year. Right. So you kind of might as well almost get it, get Prime as opposed to just having one medical because Prime is 140. You get Prime plus one medical or you can just have standalone one medical for 100. So the pricing is, is um, pretty So I guess the here. question is then... Like how many one medical subscribers or patients or clients, whatever, don't have Prime? Because right. that is that's <laughs> yeah. the the mm -hmm. potential incremental audience gain there. But yeah, you know, I don't know if do you have that number? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. That's a good question though. Yeah. It is a bit of a bare bones um, offering, so it's not an incredibly comprehensive healthcare plan. And so there's that as well, which was the point. I think it was. Zach Stambor was making, which I think is a really good one, one of our analysts. All right, folks, let's move to our second question here. We're talking about Meta. And in Europe, Meta, uh, for the first time, is offering ad-free versions of Facebook and Instagram to comply with evolving European regulations on privacy. To protect folks' privacy, Europe's highest court just barred Meta from combining data collected about users across platforms, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and outside apps and sites, unless it got real consent from people, which is why it's doing this. Question is, how much will the ad-free tier cost per month 
on mobile devices. How much mm. will the ad-free tier cost per month on mobile devices? $11 a month, $14 a month, or $17 a month? $11, $14, or $17? A, B, or C? Karina says B. Evelyn says 14. And Stephanie says A. The correct answer is 14, which is B. $14 a month. The N-O-Y-B, none of your business, is a, a privacy advocacy law firm over there in the EU that just submitted a complaint to the Austrian Data Protection Authority that this is not an adequate uh, workaround for Meta, mm. that they're having to pay mm. what they refer to as a privacy fee to exercise their right under GDPR to data privacy. So that is interesting. And for those, anyone who is a privacy buff, I know YB is tied to the famous Max Schrems of Schrems 1 and 2 fame. So this should be interesting. I was waiting for this to happen. This might not be a sustainable of a workaround for Meta. So we'll see. Yeah, I think there's definitely going to be some kickback against mm -hmm. this from campaigners. And I think it's an interesting move by Meta because I don't think they really are launching this on the assumption that many people are going to sign up to it. I no. I think they're kind of calculating the potential loss if people do opt out. Yeah. And they're saying, okay, fine, you can pay this. But really, I think they're working on the assumption that most people are going to say, I'm not paying £14 a month for access. Fine, mm -hmm. you can just track my data and, and serve me mm -hmm. up. Right. That. But of course, mm -hmm. is that really consent? Right? Yeah. Is that really yeah. a choice? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pricing mm -hmm. a thing where you know folks are going to say, no, it's right, just do the other thing you were doing before. Um, not a lot of interest either. There was a civic science survey that came out right when these launched. 82% of people, which is as you can tell from the number, most who use Facebook and Instagram would not be interested in paying for an ad-free mm. subscription option. And the 14% who said that they would, because some said they didn't know or uh, opted out, 14% who said that they would be interested said they'd pay up to $10 a month for it, mm. which is obviously uh, below this listed price. Yeah. It'll, be in it'll be interesting to see what happens with user numbers, whether anyone just mm -hmm. opts out altogether. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And kind of protest. And another thing I think is interesting is that it's more expensive on mobile than it is on desktop because of mm. the the fees that Google and Apple charge to, you know, in-app purchasing fees. So, ah, yeah. I wonder if maybe we'll start to see some folks migrate Shift social yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, use their 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 social platforms on just desktop instead just around. to to save 3 bucks if they want to if they want to go in on the subscription. <laughs> I doubt. I highly doubt that. Yeah. I'll be amazed that's a really, to see many people. <laughs> that is a, that's a stretch. Yeah, save, <laughs> save those three bucks. Yeah, it's 14 on mobile, 11 on uh, web. All right, let's move to our final question of the round. Spotify is the last digital giant we're talking about. The audio streaming giant recently told us that it was in good shape. It is approaching the 600 million users mark, continues to make enough money to turn a profit. But what did Spotify just offer British and Australian and next year American premium subscribers? Was it 10% off merch bought through Spotify's platform? Was it 20% off its new higher quality audio tier? Or was it 15 free hours of audiobook listening per month? Was it merch, Ooh, audio quality tier, or audiobook hours? Karina says C. Three hours. Evelyn says C. Three hours. And Stephanie incorrectly says B. Of course. Uh, the higher quality audio tier doesn't exist yet. Uh, but there has been talk about it. Um, we're just waiting for it to come out. You'd think it would come out by now, but it hasn't. It's a free hours of uh, of audiobook listening per month. It's across uh, so 150,000 titles. Spotify launched audiobooks a year ago and struck deals with the largest US publishers, hundreds of others. So there's a lot there. What do you guys make of this initiative? Think it helps? Sure. <laughs> Why not? Sure. I mean, I everyone likes something three. free, right? <laughs> yeah. I love audiobooks and mm. uh, I mean, I personally will still continue to use my library subscription to access them for free unlimited hours, but you know, Spotify is trying to get into the audiobook sector and this is uh, you know Th this can't hurt that initiative. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but he specifically said help. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Net positive? 
<laughs> Question mark? Will it help? <laughs> um, yeah, it, there was some reading, a reading from, from this saying that there's a good tie between podcasts and audiobooks because if there's a podcast, they could recommend an audiobook on that podcast uh, or vice versa. And uh, if you're listening to certain types of podcasts, there's a chance you'll be interested in certain types of audiobooks. If there's an author who's been on the podcast, then they can serve you up their audiobook. So there's a, a, a good tie up. And then also, secondly, the the amount of time, 15 hours a month doesn't sound like a lot, but- That's like two audiobooks. People, yeah, most exactly. Yeah. And most people read about, I think it was a book or a book and a half, according to Pew Research, a month. So it's, yeah, it's plenty for the average person. If you're an incredibly a fast reader, then maybe it's not enough, but it, yeah, it's, it is more than enough. <laughs> fast listening. reader. Listen really quickly. <laughs> I read pretty well, fast. You can listen to them on like 1.5 1. 1. speed. 1.5, yeah. Um, but I do wonder if, if that's going to anyone's cannibalize. If anyone's listening to this podcast or 1.5, stop it. Okay. <laughs> Sarah Lebo Let's does that. I weird. have heard. Does she? Uh, she li- she listens on, on uh, quick speed and reads the transcript. Furious. It's sorry to expose to you, Sarah. Second. One but second, I wonder. Let me right now. <laughs> I wonder if the audiobook initiative will cannibalize some listening time from podcasts for Spotify. Like if that serves the same need on the consumer end, and so will then if consumers will just instead of spending their time washing dishes listening to podcasts, if they'll switch over to audiobooks, which is what I do. Sometimes I'll decide, hey, I'm going to listen to a longer form audio format than my usual podcast and switch over to an audiobook for f- that I would normally spend that time listening to podcasts. It's a great point. I think it will. We've had a few other analysts. We talked about this once or twice in the last month. Paul Briggs, I believe, was one of the folks who had mentioned this as well. He thinks that that listening time will come um, out of that same pot. All right, folks, uh, let's count the scores after... Ugh, it's pretty bleak. After two it's rounds... It's pretty bad. I think um, me and Karina got all three of those correct. So yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad yeah. for certain people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not named Karina and Evelyn. Uh, so um, where are That's the right. final? Where are the final scores? It should be four three two. I have. I think I have one point. Oh, Why did the final scores it's four three one. Oh, four, three one. So Marcus, if you look at like, oh, the end after, of round two, there it is. total after this sheet round. Is at least I'm, at least terrible. I'm honest. Stuart, who made. The sheet Stuart really made this and tries head. to run the team, but clearly is not doing a good job. Uh, f- yeah, this sheet is awful. But the, yeah, this final score. Thank you, B. The final score is not as awful as my current score. After round oh. Oh, 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 <laughs> jokes about yourself. Well played. Uh, half yeah, a Ste- point. Stephanie has no. Yeah, half a Enough. point. <laughs> Uh, and then we'll round up at the end. <laughs> Stephanie has uh, one and a half points. She doesn't. It's, it's just the one after two rounds. What's happening, Stephanie? Uh, Evelyn has three and Karina has uh, four. So it's uh, it's incredibly low scoring, but they're all bunched together. So it's all to play for somehow uh, as we head into the final rounds. It's closest wins. This is the round where the closest guest wins the most points. Three questions. Closest guest for each gets three points. Second closest gets two. Furthest away from the right answer just gets one. And we're going back to the subjects from the first round. Um, So we're talking about AI wearables and Humane's AI pin again for question one. How many AI pins did Humane say they plan to sell in the first year. How many AI pins did Humane say they plan to sell in the first year? For context, because uh, that's a hard thing to guess, for context, Apple sold nearly 400,000 iPods in the year after its 2001 launch. If that made anyone else feel old, join the club. Oh my gosh. This is like a wild guess. Mm. Given your score, Stephanie, I feel like most of your guesses <laughs> have fallen into that category. I feel like this is how much they think they're going to sell, right? Not they th- realistically they think- how much they're going to sell. No, how many yeah. they think they, they're going to They plan sure. to sell. Yeah, yeah. They plan- they'd their- like to sell. Yeah. 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 Stephanie hasn't mm. written in yet. Because it's just <laughs> such a guess. Stephanie says Well, you B. can't get it any more uh, wrong I said, than that one I time said, I guessed like t- like 240 billion on the AR device. Yeah, you made up you made up a number. You invented is a 
Cusquil- well, I just, I just something. said C, so. <laughs> yes, definitely. But C is just the correct Three. answer. No, Karina <laughs> says 150,000. Evelyn says 200,000. Stephanie says 250,000. They're all actually pretty good guesses. <laughs> I, I'd have been all over the place. Um, but Karina is closest. 100,000 mm. is what they're going for, which means Evelyn is second closest and Stephanie is my third gosh. closest. Um, but they are all not really, my really. Day. No. Uh, they're all really decent. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, it's not. Uh, they're, they're, yeah, they're all pretty good guesses. 100,000. It's ambitious. We'll see. Optimistic, yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right, folks, let's move to our second question. Shopping Amazon from your social feed is what we were talking about before. And we'll stick with the kind of uh, social commerce is what we're talking about. What share of Americans are social commerce buyers. Uh, what share of Americans are social commerce buyers? According to our forecasts, the definition of one of those people is uh, over 14 years old who have bought one thing in a calendar year. What share of Americans are social commerce buyers? Stephanie says 250,000. <laughs> <000. laughs> Put yourself together, Stephanie. Uh, Karina says uh, uh, it's unnecessarily specific 37.8 <laughs> Evelyn says 28% uh, percent, and Stephanie says 35% percent. Karina is uh, hideously close <laughs> I think it might be it's, I rounded up but it's pretty much spot on it's 38% percent. so Karina yeah. you rounded up on that it. by the way yep yeah. you got it to the decimal which wasn't needed but well played uh, Karina gets the most points uh, and then Stephanie gets the second most with 35% percent, and then Evelyn <sighs> With twenty eight percent, nearly as n- not. It it's not far right. off China. China's around forty percent somewhere. Wow, really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Have y'all bought a lot more total people? Anything yes. off of social media? Never. Yeah, yeah. TikTok a lot of TikTok. Wow. Guys. And I'm one of I'm one of only a quarter of the UK <laughs> population that has bought something <laughs> over social commerce. I just I don't I still don't trust the number of times I've seen videos on social media of people having bought things that arrive you know, two months later and are not what they thought that they purchased just mm-hmm. has totally turned me off of it. And I just, I, I have pretty had good experiences. only good experiences oh, well, on TikTok by like influencers who I follow and watch. Like I watch several videos before I buy a product, mm. but yep. Buy through TikTok shop a lot. Mm. This has become a big commercial for TikTok shop and humane. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't think we're, we're I'm not really, sure about humane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not really humane. Yeah. Sorry, humane. Um, it's a lot of people, yeah, 38%. So it's over 100 million Americans and growing somewhat. Uh, US social commerce dollars, they're really growing, uh, expected to more than double in the next four years. And today, social commerce dollars account for 6% of all online shopping. 6%. And I think it's going to be 8% in a few years' time. Um, so that's going up too. All right, folks, let's move to our third and final question of the round of the game. I thought there were four uh, the, in this round. Just three. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you guys Hungry could for use, more points, You guys Evelyn? could use four. Uh, <laughs> you want to really, uh, you all want to sweep this thing? Is that what we're saying? <laughs> it's, been, uh, it's been rough. Okay, final question. The writer's strike is what we're revisiting, uh, talking about movie ticket sales. So I uh, kind of hinted at this, but I didn't give you an exact number. How much had uh, movie ticket sales in North America recovered in 2022 compared to 2019? So as a percentage, 2019 was a certain percentage, let's say 100%. um, How much had uh, movie ticket sales in 2022 recovered, according to Box Office Mojo? I'm not sure I understand the question. What? How much did they bounce back? Yeah, 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 yeah. How close are they to the, the pre-pandemic 2019? So if uh, the tw- pre-pandemic 2019 on an index was 100, how yeah. close to that are they? Oh, right. Okay, got you. As yeah. of 2022. Yeah, it was an incredibly poorly worded mm. question. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone. Oh, no. Wait. It's definitely, I can't tell if that was your previous answer. No, no, no. Yeah, it was your previous gonna, answer. It's going to okay. be oh, I've gone too high on this. I've gone too high. It's going to be similar. Oh, my God. Everyone's... One answer, please, people. What, what is happening? That's uh, one answer. Okay. Not if you're Evelyn. Okay. 35 was what are my the last two, one. What are the two stars? 
That's my right. real answer. What is, it, oh, is everyone okay. doing two answers? Do I get no? Two I've, I've only no, done no, one. No one gets I've two answers. I'm, I'm doing another answer. No, no don't do another answer. Star, star, star. star. <laughs> <laughs> and don't add stars, Karina. Don't do whatever that's doing. I don't know why. Take my second answer, stars. please. Second answer. Like there's answer. a footnote to your. I don't. Okay. <clears throat> no, I'm taking. <laughs> you can take the first one if you want. Yeah, you take the first one. Karina, which one do you want? I don't know. I mean, I think either you take the first or you take the second from both of us. <laughs> you pick. You pick. You... No, 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 you no, can't you put, put down two. <laughs> That's what would that be like if it was? <laughs> who wants to be a millionaire? And you are going to give two, you two answers, um, and you can and pick, you Chris. pick the one. Hey, that you this pick. Is, this should be. <laughs> who picked. wants to be a millionaire is, is multiple choice. That's different. So you say it's either A and, or C. You pick. Yeah, any other game show. That's what I meant to say. Uh, yeah, A or C. You pick. <laughs> I'll go with my first. I think it's wrong. I think I'm going to kick myself. But okay. Go. Karina goes with 65%. Evelyn, you're going with? You can go with my first one. 87%. And Stephanie goes <laughs> with either 40 or her second answer, 40.1. Only oh, because everyone was giving two. <laughs> Both That's a close call. Uh, very wrong. Um, <laughs> Karina apparently knows the numbers off by heart. Sixty-five percent spot on. Oh, wow. No way. That on was the just nose. the first thing that. Imagine yeah. how annoyed I'd be if. Yeah, I, I know I that. Yeah, my that's answer. why I gave wow. you the chance because I didn't right, want to pick okay, for you. Yeah. Okay, uh huh. Sixty-five nice. percent. Karina gets the uh, is closest. I think that means Stephanie is second closest yeah. it was the point one and that did evelyn me, that you know? brought you to so much that much closer <laughs> and evelyn is uh, furthest away um surprisingly oh, no. though you, you would have thought it would have uh i thought it was I yeah i i could have sworn i'd heard something that was like almost completely recovered to 2019 levels but i guess i made that up maybe i'm just this a really year, big movie person. i think <laughs> this year up to october I believe that we had gotten to where we were for year 2022. So this year is planning to be closer to the number that you put down. So that was, might have been, but it, we're comparing 2019 oh. to 2022. So oh, maybe that's where what you were thinking. Yep. Barbenheimer. Um, that's, yes. wow. Yep. The Barbenheimer effect. You know, and I. Helps. And then the shutdown, the strikes yeah. did not help. Um, all right. That's all we got time for, for that round. Let's have a quick glance at the scores so no need no, Karina like uh, killed it for the tiebreaker <laughs> yeah, did. thanks I think I did all right on that yep Stephanie managed to pull out seven points which ain't bad hey considering you had one going know. into round three Evelyn comes in second place with 10 and Karina runs away with it with 18 points yeah <gasps> Karina Karina thanks. so Heck yeah 18 what does that 18? mean wow, wow well, I won I can't believe I won does that mean really back really in the game? won all right, folks, let's head to the overall scores. Karina has uh, three super duper points for her team. Uh, so she got the most. And then Evelyn has two super duper points and Stephanie has one. So if you add those to the totals, somehow everyone is tied <laughs> yeah! on 16 oh, super yeah. duper points each. <laughs> <laughs> wait, really? Wait, wait, 16? No. Everyone no. is tied on 16 because Karina. No, but uh, I, I thought retail had 15. 18. Retail had 13 yeah. plus the three ah, super duper is 16. Social and tech had 15 plus the one right. is 16. Advertising media had 14 plus the two, which is also 16. <laughs> nice. So nice. with this. everyone tied, we of course Woo! have to change the rules and everyone goes through to the yeah! finals in December. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! And goes through <laughs> to the finals. When we started this, I was like, this is going to be real bad. One team's going to run away with it. It's going to be like the F1, Max Verstappen's one halfway through the season. <laughs> What's the point? But uh, no, actually, it was a bit, it's pretty close. Uh, heading into the, as close as it can be, heading into uh, the December <laughs> finals. So we will see you guys there. Thank you so much to my uh, to my contestants today. Uh, thank you so much to Stephanie. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you to Evelyn. Thank you, Marcus. And thank you to this week's winner, Karina. Thanks, Marcus. Best episode ever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you're all winners because you're all going through to the finals. Uh, so congratulations to all the teams who somehow <laughs> managed to tie uh, going into December. Thank you to Victoria, who edits the show, keeps score, and does pretty much everything else. Thank you to James, who copy edits it, and Stuart, who does some stuff, but no one really knows because he's, he's kind of bailed he on makes his... Makes impossible spreadsheets. Yeah. <laughs> thank you to Stuart, exactly. Makes impossible <laughs> spreadsheets. Thank you to Sophie, who posts on our social media. Thanks to everyone for listening in. We'll be back with the December quiz 
finals at the end of December. We hope to see you tomorrow for the Behind the Numbers Weekly Listen and eMarketer podcast. Okay, I have to get something out first of all. There's a chance I'm going to start singing Cher just wait, at some wait. point throughout this. Yeah, it's in my head. I can't get I can't get the <laughs> bloody song out of my head. What era Which are one? We talking about? Yeah. Sh- Which song? The, Let us hear it, please. The Shoop Shoop song. It's in his fist. <laughs> I don't know where it came from, but it's, it's been there for a while. So if that just happens, if you just hear like a humming, it. yeah, just go with it. Just go yeah. with it. Okay. You got it. All right, I've got that out of the way. I feel better. Hey, that's why he's been in a funk. Yeah, I'm all over the place. To get that off his chest. Yeah, because of this. Uh, <laughs> karaoke tonight, so I'll get out then.